that he was a very good physician, that Mrs. Howard was ill, and Robert was sorta, of, kinda crazy. <laughs> and as a child, I believed them. <laughs> well, the people here did not realize how smart Robert was at the time. And he did go out of his way to make them believe that he was very different. Well, I remember them talking about him walking from here, his house here to downtown Cross Plains and uh, shadow boxing and talking. And I guess he was acting out his writings, his stories. And of course that made people think he really was crazy, you know. But that's about the only thing I remember. Of course, I was not but five years old when Robert died. So that's about all I remember about him. I think for a while, the people didn't realize that Robert wrote things besides stories like Conan the Barbarian, and it, it was bloody and bad, you know, or you know what they thought. But now that they know he wrote poetry and westerns and other th stories, they're beginning to accept him more. Well, in 1987, we did not have an active Chamber of Commerce. So a group of us got together and decided we needed an organization to help clean up Cross Plains, preserve the history. So we did a lot of extensive study and, and everything about that and started cleaning up the town. Then this house became, came up for sale. And we decided we needed to buy it, Project Pride did, in order to preserve it and help our town. And 10 of us, 10 of the members in Project Pride went on a bank note to purchase the house. And it was in very bad shape when we got it. And we had it restored, had a lot of work done on it. Then in 94, we had a tornado come through and put it back the way it was when we bought it and we had it to do over. But that's the reason that we uh, bought the house because we thought it would promote Cross Plains, which it has. And a lot of the people have come around to accepting Robert and accepting the house and everything since they see what it can do for the community. I see him as a man before his time, a very intelligent man. Uh, he had to read everything he could in order to write like he did. And I have seen some parallel to the Bible stories in some of his writings. And well, to compare him like I heard about him, He's a different person, just a different person altogether. I just wish the people that think ill against him would read some of his poetry and his westerns, and then that would change their mind, I think. We have a paper in the, in the case in our kitchen that was put out, published by Cross Plains High School when he was up here, and he seems to be accepted by the students in the high school. So uh, some of his, like I said, some of his poetry's in this paper, and it, it's very good. I think the fact that he tried to fool so many people. I am not an avid reader, so I don't read a lot. I've not read a lot of his works, but he did, he fooled a lot of people. And that's comical to me. I mean, he's so different from the way he acted. They all thought he was crazy and thought he didn't have enough sense to write, which he did. Very, he just very intelligent and studied. I don't know if you got the story about where we're sitting here was the Butler house and Mrs. Hester Butler, her name was Hester also. <clears throat> at that time, everyone here slept with their windows up in order to be cool at night. And Mrs. Howard slept in her bedroom. Robert had his windows up and he would be typing on his typewriter and talking and Mrs. Butler would holler, Hester, make him be quiet, we're trying to sleep. And Mrs. Howard would holler back, leave him alone, Hester, he's working. And Mrs. Butler's son told us that story when he was here one time. What did he think of Robert? He played with Robert and do you know we did not get an interview with him before he died. He died not long after that. And he, he had a good feeling about him, I think. <laughs>